I want to explain what I call my Tokyo doorbell policy. Now recently my apartment building has been undergoing some renovations and they installed those doorbells that have the video feed. Okay, these are all the rage right now. So when someone rings the doorbell at the front of the building to get in the actual building, I get a video of that. And when someone rings my doorbell at my actual apartment uh, front door, I get video of that. I love this. I love this. Maybe I'm what you could call too American or paranoid or living in fear or weird or screwed up in the head. I don't care what you call it. But I have a very strict policy when it comes to my doorbell being rung. I only generally allow two categories of people in. Okay, the first is the Takubin guy, the delivery guy or girl. They're delivering a package. I ordered a lot of stuff on Amazon, on Rakuten, and they're delivering it to me. Access granted. Number two, the pizza guy or girl. I ordered a pizza, maybe from Domino's. They got the whole get up on, they got my pizza in their hand. Access granted. You're allowed in. Anything else? Oh, hell no. Like a guy in a suit? Oh, no. No way. Because no good is going to come of allowing anyone into your, your place, of answering your door. Trust me. Okay. And think about it this way. When is someone going to ring your doorbell and say, hey, we got a bucket of money here. We're going to deliver this to you. Okay. This is your bucket of money. Or like a really hot girl. Hey, hey, I, I, I see you're a cool guy in the neighborhood. You want to hang out? Yeah, that's like a porno theme. Okay, that's a porno plot. And it doesn't happen in real life. Okay. The reality is people are coming and ringing your doorbell because they want money. They want to knife you or they want to rob you or all three. Okay, probably all three. And I just have this fear, I'm gonna open the door for the wrong person. I open the door and knife, 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 That's my fear. And I think it's a real fear. Okay, so I have this policy. I really don't open the door for anyone else. And I have this funny story kind of. Recently, the doorbell rings. I go and look at the video feed and it's a guy in a cop outfit. And I'm like, oh shit. I got a lot of stuff running through my head, okay? I'm a foreigner in a foreign land, foreign land. What did I do? They're here for me. They're here to arrest me. What did I do? I'm trying to think of all the stuff I had done. Going through it. What, what, what did I do wrong? Did I leave hair at the crime scene or something? And I'm thinking, oh, am I going to do the intercom with this guy? Because you do intercom, you make your choice, and then you buzz him in or not. And I do the intercom and I kind of regret it. And he says, hey, I'm a cop. And I'm thinking first thing in my head, first instinct, fake cop, right? Of course, it's gotta be a fake cop. And he does this thing like, like he kind of tips the hat, like, hey, look, I'm a cop. I got the hat on, like that's proof. Now, if I were a fake cop, I would totally do that. Look, I got the uniform on. I got the hat, of course I'm a cop, you know, let me in. No badge, no ID, nothing. I'm a cop because I'm wearing the hat. So he says, he's, he's going off on the spiel and I'm getting maybe 50% of it. And he keeps using this word. And unfortunately, I don't know this word. And obviously this word is very important. He keeps repeating this word and I don't know what this is. And he says, okay, uh, can you let me in? I want to talk for a little bit. And I say literally in Japanese, I say, uh, actually that's not good. That's not okay with me. And he, he did not expect that answer. This was definitely the first time in his whole career, his whole life that he had heard that answer. No, I, I really don't want to let you in. And what happened is the intercom just, it has a timeout apparently, and it just cut off. It just hung up on him. I didn't press anything. I didn't do it. And 
he, of course, he rings it again. And I don't answer. I'm not going to answer. I don't want, I don't want trouble. Okay. You're going to have to bang down the door with a warrant. And I want my lawyers here before, and I'm going to be kicking and screaming. Okay. Before I'm going to open the door for that cop. (laughs) Coppers. So I look up the word I don't know. And it turns out to be patrol. And I'm a little embarrassed because I've been in Japan for over 10 years now. And you'd think by now I would know the word patrol, but I did not. And I'm sorry about that. I really have no excuse. And the second thing is I've been in Japan for over a decade. Okay. And this is my first experience with patrol. Apparently this is a thing in Japan. The cops patrol the neighborhood and they talk to the citizens, you know, to see how, what's going on in the neighborhood. I don't know, I thought the 50s were over. I didn't know they did this like, hello, hello, ma'am. Good good day to you. We're just doing the patrol, you know, swinging the billy club. I didn't know this was a thing in Japan. This is my first experience, well over a decade in to my life in Japan. This is a thing, apparently. I didn't know about that. Okay, a little bit embarrassed about that. So, who knew? Later on in the day, I go to get lunch and I see the cop and he's, he's patrolling. Who knew? And luckily the video feed is only one way, of course. So he didn't know what I looked like. He, he obviously knew I was a foreigner probably because of my accent. But besides that, he didn't know what I looked like. And he looked like a cop legitimately patrolling the neighborhood, if you will. So who knew that was a thing? Lesson learned. But I don't know, in retrospect, I probably still wouldn't have opened the door. <laughs> Even if he had ID and all that. I don't know, man. I got, I got a strict policy. Okay, and maybe I'm a victim of the culture of fear. But I have a lot of crazy, fear-filled fantasies when it comes to my doorbell ringing and me answering it for the wrong person. Yes, maybe I've watched way too many horror movies. Okay. And I have these really unreasonable fears. And one of them, even with my strict policy, is that what if it's a fake delivery person, you know, or someone delivering a fake pizza? Now I order a lot of stuff online and I I, I just worry that you know, I'm like, did I order something? Yeah, I probably did. Let him in. Comes up. He's got a fake package. I open the door. Knife, 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 knife. knife foo. Could happen. I'm sure stranger things have happened. I'm sure it's happened in the world. Okay, I, I've heard this on the news. Culture of fear. Someone's wearing a fake delivery guy outfit and starts knifing people. Okay, and I'm freaking out about that. Fortunately, my building... God bless my building. They have eased my fears a little bit. They have a locker system right at the entrance of the building. So if I'm not home or if I don't answer the door, they leave the package in the locker and they leave a little receipt in my mailbox. And then I could pick up the package later. And this is great because the last thing you want is any human interaction because that is nothing but trouble. I order something online no human interaction. It gets delivered. It gets put in a locker. No human interaction. This is the way it should be. This is perfect. However, yet another fear sprang from this. What if it's a fake package? Like, did I order this? Yeah, probably. I ordered a lot of stuff. I can't remember everything. Maybe I should track this a little bit better. I take the package up to my room. I open it up. Boom! Bomb in my face! Could happen. Stranger things have. Or, it's a big box. I open it. It's a guy with a knife! Knife, 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 knife! Like the, you know, the, like the girl in the cake. Girl pops out of the cake. But this is a guy with a knife. Delivered to my house. Or, the worst of all. I open the box. White powder in my face. Boom! <coughs> Anthrax, 
or even worse, zombie disease, okay? That's how the zombie apocalypse could start. White powder in the face? And then I go out in my building, I start biting the other, you know, the Japanese people. And then boom, Tokyo zombie apocalypse. This could happen. Now, I'm not saying this is just a Tokyo thing. I think it's more of like a big city thing around the world. Maybe the small towns don't suffer from this as much. But I'm going to say this. If you live in a big city anywhere in the world, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of crazies out there. <laughs> a lot of crazies. Your doorbell rings. Just don't answer it, man. It's not worth it. It ain't fucking worth it. Don't answer the door. And I encourage everyone to adopt my Tokyo doorbell policy. Thank you for listening.